everyone, Kuro the Artist here, welcome back to another Ben 10 Breakdown. As I tread my way through Season 4, I finally reach what was perhaps the biggest movie event of the franchise and had a very exciting payoff. The entire universe is going to blow up if Ben Tennyson doesn't figure out how to stop the Omnitrix's countdown. So with the help of an ex-bounty hunter, Tetrax, his stowaway sorceress cousin Gwen, and an irritable convicted scientist, Myax, they set out to find the true creator of the then mysterious and rumored Omnitrix before everything comes to an end, and Vilgax, in a bold effort for revenge, is hot on their trail. This is one of those movies that have such high rewatchability for me. It's got some great animation, quippy dialogue, intense action, and a simple but well-rounded story. It's great for Ben 10 fans because it answers a lot of questions that the first four series built up, but it's also great for first-time viewers because it takes time leading itself into the world of Ben 10 and keeps its story simple, clear, but engaging. Ben 10's Secret of the Omnitrix was written by classic alumni Tom Pugsley and Greg Klein and first aired on August 10th, 2007. A battle with Dr. Animo's DNA bomb causes the self-destruct function on the Omnitrix to activate, alerting Tetrax to come back to Earth to investigate, which becomes the start of a galaxy-wide road trip adventure. CG Omnitrix was so hype. Although I just noticed the dial isn't actually turning. If you look to the sides, you can see it's the entire Omnitrix spinning. I actually just noticed this right now. I've seen this like a thousand times. I never noticed that. They're still using that season one transformation background though. An eye guy, our first glimpse at eye guy. The little bubbles inside the Ben 10 logo are animated too. We were supposed to go to the mall today. Got a little sidetracked. One great thing about this movie is all the different color palettes that it uses. And it's Dr. Animo yet again. My DNA bomb! I de-evolutionize the world! This is pretty similar to his plan in Dr. Animo and the Mutant Ray. I'll be able to bounce my transmodulator signal and blanket the planet with its power. Although if you got a goal in mind, might as well keep fighting for it. So as you guys can see, I got the Heat Blast opening. There are two alternate versions of this opening with Eye Guy and Accelerate, but as of now, I can't find them in good quality. If you guys would like me to break those down and compare them as well, just let me know in the comments. Maybe there's other places I could look. Well, there's a nice little focus transition right here. It happened so fast, I almost missed it. Meet my latest creation. So this is supposedly made with some of the Lepidopteran DNA he acquired in Divided We Stand. At least I think so, because I'm trying to think of what animal he can mutate that would result in this. There's a lot of intense camera movement here, but you can still kind of make out the action. Oh yeah! And I love the heat that gets dragged out from the bug as he rises from the fire. It's almost animated like liquid, but it disappears instead of continues to drop. And this is sort of a demonstration of his pyrokinesis, since he's creating discs instead of shooting excess fire. Very quick reflexes here. This has got a lot of good scenes for Heat Blast. Gwen's mouth isn't open for a lot of the times that she's actually screaming. But look at that, it only took four seasons in a movie for Grandpa Max to finally start casually bringing his plumber gear around. You don't know what that's going to do! Can't be any worse than what's going to happen if I don't. That's a pretty good point. He has put in a tough situation there. You're overloading the system! <laughs> I can't tell if Heat Blast is just drawn skinnier for this frame or if his head is drawn bigger. But either way, he still looks pretty good. I'm digging the faint glows that they have around his cracks. Movies always like to put in a little bit of extra detail. With another beautiful shot supposedly done by Tom Perkins. Another quick color palette change as they switch to the hard lights. We're like three minutes in and I already love the look of this movie so much. The series still looks phenomenal at some points too, but you know, movies always have that extra visual care put into them. Just fascinating to see. There's always tomorrow! Good thing I was heat blast, cause that DNA wave would have scrambled me. So that's one thing they have to replace in the alternate versions, right? Did they get Tara to do alternate takes of that line as well? I really gotta see the alternate versions of this film again. It's been years. What's up with the watch? I don't know. There's always something up with the watch. But now we're treated to this nice little CG sequence going straight into the watch. I always thought this was one of the coolest things. Because we see all of this technology swarming through. Then it fades into these wires that sort of look like veins. And finally we're at like some sort of DNA cortex. You even see what kind of looks like a cell almost. So showing the technology transitioning into Ben's human DNA. A very unique way to show the unity between Ben and the Omnitrix. 
All right. Who knows what's going on with those? But Animal's getting away. Man, I always love when they do these morphing transformations. I think we only get them in the season one finale and also that Kevin episode in season two, but they're always done so well. The pieces are placed perfectly so they blend into each other. <laughs> It's kind of the way Omniverse does their transformations. At least from human to alien, they have been grow into them. Oh, look at how this happens. The eyes go on top of the head, and it's like gray matter swallows the diamond head shape into his form. How are you planning on catching up to Animo now, short stuff? The hoverboard. It's always a treat every time they bring this back. Although there's actually none of the board's detail drawn in this frame, but you can't really tell because most of the time you're looking at Animo or gray matter, which are heavily detailed. Now the board has its proper textures and stuff on it. When Animo's about to throw gray matter, the highlights in his eyes are colored the same as his pupils. You know, even if Animo wasn't controlling the bug at this time, I'm surprised the bug would just willingly fly into this too. I think I remember something about the bug being under Animo's telepathic control now, instead of him just training his mutants, so that could be why. <laughs> You know, with Grandpa's Plumber gear and Gwen's spells, I'm surprised they still keep getting captured. That was awesome! What's next? Even for the movie, they're using the same CG rust bucket from the TV show. It's not a bad model, maybe I'm just used to seeing it so much now. Now we get to do something I want to do. Oh man! You don't even know what it is, Ben. Relax. And malls are fun. Who doesn't like going to the mall? Is that a boob joke? You're going down! Ah! This is a store. How do you think these will make me look? So, get them all. Thanks, Grandpa! So this sort of implies that Grandpa's buying them for him, right? But then there was that episode where it seemed like Gwen had her own money. Wow, those must have been expensive. I'm just wondering, where are these kids getting all this cash from? And Ben's been expected to pay for a lot of his stuff in the series, too. Is everyone in the Tennyson family loaded? I'm the one stuck in some dumb clothing store during my summer vacation. Yep, because it's a movie, we gotta reset the personality again. This is so fun! No, this isn't so far off of something she'd wear in Alien Force. It actually blinks red a few times before finally settling on orange. Maybe that's to show it's initially starting up. I also really appreciate how the shadows are reacting to the light around it. Although now it's actually affecting the atmosphere too, with the way that Ben's hair and clothes are moving. Not my size. Banned from an entire mall? That's kind of a stretch from accidentally knocking something over. But I guess they could run their store however they want. See, even out here has a special color palette to match it. Not to mention how on model the characters are always looking in this film. This rivals Heroes United for the best visual medium of Ben 10. And there are lots of improvements from the show too. Like in the show, this would probably just be a bunch of textures, which is fine for an episode background. But here they really went ahead and painted all of these trees and leaves. I'm just saying this looks really good. Even the CG rust bucket is affected by the lighting. That like never happens. Oh, it's 3.30. As he approaches, it looks like his Petro-Sapien arm morphs back into his hand without the sleeve covering it first. Like the suit is part of his skin. Tetrax! So this is our first time as an audience hearing the name Tetrax. Because in his debut episode, they never actually say his name, and he doesn't show up again until now. It's said that Ben learned his name because he was sent a hollow message from Tetrax explaining more details, but literally none of that is brought up here. So in the context of only consuming the shows and the movie, Ben just randomly knows his name now. And to do this salute. About munching that X321 you gave me. So that's the name of his hoverboard, the X321. Again, something in just the context of the movie, Ben somehow knows. I picked up the SDM signal from the Omnitrix. Self-destruct mode? Along with whoever is wearing it at the time. Wow, this is a great shot for Tetrax. Also sucks about the watch, Ben. So you have no idea what triggered the Omnitrix self-destruct mode. Some more great visual stills, but this would have had to been replaced too, depending on which version of the movie you're watching. So you can't can't just replace the intro, like it's an entirely different version of the film. It's a mystery. Another example of Ben being smarter than he lets on. I haven't a clue how to deactivate the Omnitrix. <laughs> Only Azmuth would know how to do that. So this shot right here matches the shot I was complimenting earlier, but they're both lit completely differently. This is not something you'd notice upon watching, though. The rumored creator of the Omnitrix. How long? I'd say less than four Earth days. Four Earth days is such a random number, but also kind of fits with the alien physiology of it, too, as time is probably kept in many different ways throughout the galaxy. You know, if it was like a solid week or something in Earth time, 
time, that'd be a bit of a coincidental stretch. We better get going. This shot, too. So now we got three different versions of Tetrax, all from the same angle. So it shows they're redrawing Tetrax from the ground up for every scene instead of continuing off of the last frame, which is understandable. I mean, who really gives a shit? Sorry, Max. Can't run the risk of some alien somewhere recognizing you. You know, to get rid of Max, that's a really good explanation. But also sucks that Max has to miss out on one of the biggest adventures. I get it, like, storytelling-wise, it would be kind of convoluted, but, you know, he's part of the Tennyson trio. I guess you're gonna get that break from your cousin after after all. It's always serious, Grandpa, and I always win. Well, those statements aren't incorrect, but... Find the creator, he'll fix the watch, and I'll be back before you know it. It's a very big ship. This is my training room. You know, if this movie was a whole season, this ship would be a great setting. I mean, it's bigger than the Rust Bucket, and they're able to use that for a bunch of different things throughout the series. Imagine Tetrax and Ben training in this room during their downtime. Tetrax acting more like a combat mentor to Ben as opposed to Max's moral mentor. Classic has so much going for it. That's the Hover Simulator. Over 1,000 different courses. Everybody would love to try that. There's a nice little fade from green back to blue as he gets away from the hoverboard simulator. The movie is so gorgeous. We haven't even gotten to Incarcer on yet. Ah, living snot. That's my pilot, Gluto. Gluto is an awesome character too, and it makes sense that Tetrax would need a pilot. I assume you're familiar with space travel protocol? He's obviously not Tetrax. Are you just fucking with him right now? Oh, sure. In these shots, you can see it's just Grandpa Max. This already gives away the fact that Gwen snuck on board the ship. And Tetrax has a great spaceship design. <laughs> And these don't even protect Ben at all. Definitely built for something much bigger than him. Hey, yeah, yeah, see, you can just slip right out. Artificial gravity. I wonder why they have to wait for that. Maybe the artificial gravity prevents them from taking off correctly, so they can't do it unless they're in orbit. We really should examine the watch. We haven't seen either of these ships before, have we? Your ship will be useful. Oh, Vilgax is using a different ship right now? I forgot about that. I guess it makes sense since his old one kept blowing up. I'm pretty sure this figure shows up in Omniverse a few times. So again, Vilgax escapes from his last encounter with Ben with no in-show or movie explanation as to how. The Omnitrix in space? I've had many of these tests performed on myself. Don't you have, like, diamond hard skin? Good point. Let's get started. I love that little joke. <laughs> Cool to see that this is drawn too with every frame not a cg render it must have been super tricky all these different pieces how do you even decide what to put where was all this blueprinted or did the storyboarders and animators just get the go nuts notes like all of these different parts of the omnitrix how much of this was designed with reason it's all so cool when my dad got my mom a watch for their anniversary he had them engrave some writing on the back of it of course that should have been the first thing he checked though started ripping this thing apart without checking the outer layer found it the creator of the Omnitrix is in some space slammer? We have an intruder. Accelerate. <laughs> I always love it when they give his transformations a little aura right after he hits the dial. The Vulpin's keen senses should be able to sniff out the intruder. So Tetrax does say Vulpin instead of Vulpamancer, but he could have just been using slang. <laughs> and that's Vulpamancer for, I meant to do that. Pause off, Fido! I figured you could use some backup. <laughs> Glad Ben's actually taken a chance to use the hoverboard simulator. Tetrax said Azimuth would deactivate the Omnitrix, not fix it. Shit, you're right. Man, imagine if we had VR like that. I thought you'd be relieved to have it off. If you're not a hero, you're a zero. Thanks a lot. I mean, you're a hero too, Gwen, but I get your point. Your transformation speed up the countdown. Now it just conveniently starts going off. But this time it's shooting out like beams of energy. <laughs> I see. That's very cool. I just noticed Gluto actually starts blushing when Gwen compliments him. And she did seem to be intuitive of Wild Mutt's speak. <laughs> I'm starting to speak mutt. So it kind of makes sense that she could speak Luda. We're coming upon in Karsika. So they were in hyperspace this whole time. Nice little transporter right here. These would have been cool to see come back. Portals throughout the universe. And there's a Karsikon. I really love the design of this prison. You are approaching secure space. Clearance accepted. I love how he gives a smirk and a thumbs up. This might be a reference to Ben doing it to him earlier in the movie. I really love these looking things too. They're like little kangaroo squid rat things. 
I love them. Also, now that they're in more neutral lighting, I can see Tetrax's ship is actually brown. It only looked blue because they were outside. Unless this only looks brown because of these lights. But you can see some reds and blues in here too, so I'm assuming this is the natural color of the ship. These prisoners see a human. Rest of the universe hates us that much? No, they're considered quite a delicacy. Would you guys rather be hated or hunted? I could go alien. And risk speeding up the self-destruct mode even more? Uh, Gluto's pretty short, at least compared to Tetrax. I thought he was like half his size. You thinking what I'm thinking? <laughs> exactly. I have just the one for you two. This is interesting. To make this stuff seem far away, instead of drawing it and put it out of focus, it's just done in a black and white painted sort of feel. And as we get closer, there's more color and more detail. But it gives you a scale of how large Incarsicon is. You could probably fit a small country in here. Maybe even more. Oh, there's a ton of different looking things here in this crowd. Is that a chicken? You got this giant spider looking thing and it has a dog. This dragon looking guy. Here's a frog writing another dog looking thing I have just the one for you two why is this the perfect disguise for them I'm an aliens butt right here we can see the same kinds of aliens that were blown out of the airlock by Vilgax earlier rock paper scissors two out of three there's that piscus Valayan. Oh, two of them. This one has pupils. That's a bit strange. No guards, no rules, no parole. That's not entirely true, because aren't the mechamorphs there as guards? Pretty sure I read that somewhere. Oh, okay, it was a maintenance engineer. Oh, yeah, and Carsicon sounds like a scary place then. Boy, this guy is everywhere, isn't he? Really digging Tetrax's disguise, too, with all these shoulder pads and trinkets and stuff. Could have very easily just been the hood and cape. And 6-6's disguise as well. That's very unique. Here we see another one of those things that was digging in the trash earlier. <laughs> Or did. Now this thing is simply horrifying. I think Tom Perkins might have drawn a Ben transformation version of this. Move along, unless we have some other business. I think the pistol's even part of the disguise, because he can definitely handle him just using his Petrosapien powers. And given the fact that he was the cause of Petropia's destruction, that's probably why he always keeps the fact he's a Petrosapien himself a secret. Oh, this was one of the uh, followers of the Big Tick. I don't know if it was really him or not, but it was his species. <laughs> Whoa, and the shot immediately after it, he's shown right over here. Either there's two of him, or he teleports. <laughs> if you notice, the slits on his coat sort of line up where the slits on his weapons appear, too. So maybe this coat was designed for combat, so he doesn't have to take it off. Yep, there's that mechamorph. This guy is pretty neat looking. He's got one of those wild mouths. <laughs> this guy over here has got a Rubik's Cube. Oh, hey, and it might be Vilgax. He must have picked up on the self-destruct signal. They're gonna take down Vilgax once and for all. Since he activates the Omnitrix with the costume over it, how'd he select who he was gonna become? Ben, wait! And Gwen gets eaten. You up and spit you out! It's great that we're using Upchuck here, too. He hasn't appeared too much since his debut. Here's that guy again. <laughs> crazy that he can ricochet his bursts too. This is the second time he curves his projectiles as an alien in this movie. That's an awesome attack. It's so small, but then boom. Wow, what kind of beam is this? Hey, you're not Vilgax. I know. So because there's a little bit of this green feathering around these black shapes, I think these are reused from when Ben transforms and this effect is shown, and just recolored quickly. Wow, they really let Gwen be with no difficulty. I guess Tetrax was wrong. He turned into a human. Oh, I got three of Ben's aliens right in one shot. A Lepidopteran, a Mechamorph, and a Piscus Valayan. It does exist! Well, that secret's out the bag. <laughs> Of course she's strong enough to do that. I like how they're still ready to fight. And you know, Gwen does have all those spells that are pretty useful. Maybe it's time for that tornado? Ah, oh, that's a much cooler hoverboard. He can become any one of us he wants. But if he knew how to control it, he would have used it again by now. That's not necessarily true. Give me that thing! They're actually doing pretty good. So here's that frame where they forgot to draw Ben's Omnitrix. A lot of people know about this error, but my duty to point these things out. Look at him go, just bam, bam. <laughs> That was my favorite board. Ah, uh, would have been mine too. Time to reveal his powers. Yeah, here you can see his suit start to go away a little bit. <laughs> 
thought you were somebody else. My ex has a really great design. I like how she's a female Vilgax species without drawing her, you know, overly voluptuous or whatever. That's something that UAF and Omniverse have a habit of falling into. What are you doing with the Omnitrix? Your asthma? There's a major problem with the watch. I can see that. Oh, it's about time. That should have been the first thing she did. And Tetrax too, now that he revealed he's a Petro Sapien, he should just be creating like a wall of crystals. Hey! <laughs> he just grabbed the bed and ran. Yeah, in more neutral lighting, I can see that Tetrax is wearing two different colors. It's hard to see a lot of the color detail in most of Incarsicon's lighting. Are you okay? Oh, I don't want to go to school. Yeah, he's okay. That's very similar to a scene that happens later on in Alien Force. You okay, man? Need smoothie. He's fine. Pluto! Yeah, you can see in this shot too, his ship is actually gold. Get us out of here! So look at this whole thing. This disc comes out of the ground and it's drawn at different proportions. And there's so many different components to it just to have these drones fly out. This movie is just so beautiful. Tetrax. There's a lot of different gradients here to complement their cell shaded lighting too. That's the creator! Nice to meet you! So the background shown from a side view until the camera angle changes, showing it come from an ascending view. That's a great perspective detail. <laughs> This guy flies into this bot and explodes. What the hell just happened? Are we sure this is the way out of here? Six Six got shot too. Maybe, but there is a problem. So she looks fine up here until right here her mouth flaps don't fully connect to... What would you call these things? I didn't officially create the Omnitrix. What? what? You're not the egocentric, selfish, self-promoting, oh, aren't I so brilliant creator of the Omnitrix? No, I'm my ex, his assistant. Well, Asmuth is more grumpy than egotistical, but perhaps she had a different relationship with him. Risking our lives to bust you out of jail. I'd still be stuck in that slime pit, wouldn't I? Yeah, but we don't know why she was there in the first place, do we? For all we know, she like murdered half of her planet. I mean, they do need her, so ultimately this is better for the safety of the universe but we don't actually find out why my ex was in jail, do we? You can't stop the self-destruct countdown? I know where Azimuth is. Xenon. Had to be Xenon. The Omni energy inside is building to critical level. Omni energy. Is this the first time they actually use that term in the show? Some of the pop-ups and writers have used that term, but it always just seemed too weird to actually sort of, you know, solidify. But hey, if they're saying Omni energy in the show, I guess it's a real thing. You didn't tell him? The explosion will cause an energy ripple that will literally rip apart the universe. So is that a feature or a side effect? So right now we know the Omnitrix is powerful enough that it can literally destroy the universe if it explodes. Well, I wonder if that's like a safety precaution for whatever reason or if it's just because the Omnitrix contains that much energy that it'd be like popping a balloon by filling it with too much air including earth grandpa and your parents god he built in the self-destruct as a last resort to keep his most prized creation out of the wrong hands okay well i guess that answers my question but even so it can probably blow up without destroying the universe in fact it did so in alien force maybe it's because the charge is being built up for so long still something like that seems to have to have been done on purpose didn't tell me that you'd be more concerned about how this affected you what do you mean i help people all the time with the honor do you help because it's the right thing to do or for the thrill of being a hero you know that's one of those lines that stuck with me throughout like my whole life ever since i first heard it because it's an ideology you can pretty much apply to any hero and it questions their entire morality because some people want to be a hero because they want to be a hero even if the results are saving lives and doing good for humanity a lot of people even mainstream heroes that people love today just do it because they enjoy the lifestyle which also begs the question that even if you do do it just for the thrill of being a hero is that exactly wrong it's like a results versus motivation sort of thing that really opens up a lot of topics on how to deconstruct a hero's motivation so here's Vilgax's new temporary ship I don't know how this went over my head entirely that he has a different ship in this movie the layout is still pretty similar to his other one, I guess. But you can definitely tell the architecture is different. Retrieve that! Vilgax found 6-6 six, six floating in space. But innocent know that I don't? Halataja! Silence! What did 6-6 six, six say? Oh, now you pissed him off. He got every weapon out right now. Some of these are just drawn right on top of him, though. I think these were supposed to be layered behind him. You had better be. 
Wow, Vilgax doesn't even have to fight to show how brutal he could be. Also, when we cut back to 6-6, six, six, you can see that the tendrils are layered behind him. It's only beforehand that they were on the wrong layer. He kind of switched back and forth and see. This containment device should deflect the energy fluctuations back into the Omnitrix. Well, that's convenient. A lot of good it does me if I can't go hero anyway. And now there's another complicated piece that animators have to remember to draw on the Omnitrix every time. <laughs> Azmuth created a device which absorbs all the light of this quadrant. Absorbs all the light? Well, in that case, shouldn't it be absorbing the headlights they just put on now, too? Or is it only, like, the natural light of the quadrant? I was the one who calculated the entire particle absorption matrix, but will we admit that? No. These creatures are all pretty smart. Even though we've only seen her and Vilgax, both of them are geniuses, so that's at least a little bit of consistency. Xenon is surrounded by an asteroid belt. How are we supposed to get to Xenon if we can't see it? It's on your wrist. Explain to me again what I'm doing out here. I like how the helmet is in completely human shape. Adds that extra alien design. And of course, the Omnitrix is inexplicably on the outside of his clothing yet again. The Omnitrix has a built-in homing device. <laughs> This is kind of cool. Only one of the buttons are lighting up. Actually, the Omnitrix is fully gray right now. Is that because it's within the suit? Could it be merged with the suit somehow? Was Gluto just sweating right now? I guess even liquid creatures can sweat. <laughs> lit up the whole place. You can see a lot of broken pieces of other travelers not making it. There it is, Xenon. Yeah! Surrender the Omnitrix! I'll just go stink and fly back! Yeah, you don't know if Stinkfly can breathe out here, dude. I'm sending the pod! So for this airlock, they got both traditional and CG animation for the air escaping. And look at these hulked out drones. These are certainly new. Maybe they came from his new ship's upgrades. <laughs> All these alien controls are very fascinating. So he just has a button that makes his walls crush what's in there. Better hope nothing in your pocket accidentally sets that off when you're walking through the ship. I can't even see living beings in there. Oh no, they spilled. There's Pluto when you need him. Now I got it. This looks like a pretty fun ship to fly. So it works just from triggering the two different pulley systems on the side? That's not bad. We need to free the Resolute from Vilgax's ship. In, in space? I'm more of a land-based species. Now she's kind of right, because when we do see Vilgaxia, they are all above water. But then again, at the end of Alien Force, Vilgax says his true form is submerged in water. Now you face the true form of Vilgax. <laughs> So that's not this movie's fault since this movie came out before those things, so it's up to the recurring material to be in tune with the previous canon, but, you know, it does make lore discussions harder. I mean, at one point they said Vilgax was from the Shadow Realm, so that was a thing. That's all for now, folks. I'm still editing part two, which will release this Sunday, about two days after this video's premiere, so sit tight for this breakdown's conclusion and my rating system. But until then, you can stay up to date with everything I do on my social medias and join the Discord for some community interaction. You can also join the Patreon for $1 a month for exclusive weekly updates on all of our series such as Five Years Later and and beyond. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend and until next time, keep it fizzy.